On March 13, 2025, an international consortium of climatologists released a shocking report on the state of the Thwaites Glacier in West Antarctica, warning of a dual threat to the European continent. The colossal ice mass, with an area equal to the territory of Great Britain, is on the verge of collapse, which could occur within the next five years, triggering a domino effect with devastating consequences for Europe. A massive crack is rapidly spreading across its surface, moving at a speed of two kilometer per year. Processes are occurring on the Thwaites Glacier, which climatologists have grimly dubbed the Doomsday Glacier, that could reshape our planet's map. Scientists are bewildered. Their latest 2024 research shows that catastrophic destruction of this mass could occur in just five years, not centuries as previously believed. The Thwaites Glacier is one of West Antarctica's largest ice shelves. Its extent along the coast is more than 100 kilometers, and its area covers 12,000 square kilo. Over the past 10 years, it has decreased by 600 billion cubic meters. These are colossal figures, even by planetary standards. Why do scientists call it the Doomsday Glacier? Clearly, it's not just because of its impressive size. The main danger is that Thwaites serves as a natural dam that holds back warm ocean waters from penetrating deeper. When the glacier disappears, these waters will rush into the ice basin located below sea level and trigger a chain reaction of melting. But even without the domino effect, the destruction of the Thwaites Glacier alone will lead to a 65 cc rise in global sea level. Think about what this means for coastal cities worldwide where millions of people live. Experts are also alarmed that the glacier is rapidly losing its grip on the seafloor, which has served as its natural anchor until now. The underwater ridge on which the glacier's eastern part rests keeps it from sliding and rapid destruction, but warm ocean waters are undermining it from below, melting critically important sections. When the Thwaites Glacier finally loses its ice anchor and floats into warm waters, triggering a chain reaction of melting, global sea level will rise not by mere centimeters, but by meters. The initial 60,000 meter from the glacier itself is only a prologue to a massive catastrophe. If Thwaites' destruction provokes the collapse of the West Antarctic ice sheet, global sea level will rise by at least three meters, and if Greenland and Arctic glaciers join the process, we'll see an increase of seven meters. The map of flooded territories under such a scenario looks frighteningly specific. Russian cities St. Petersburg and Kaliningrad are located only two moments above sea level. Pskov and Veliky Novgorod will be among the first to be underwater. In the United Kingdom, London and Cambridge will disappear. Tallinn, Tartu and Helsinki will follow their example. The Netherlands, a country that is already partially below sea level and protected only by dam systems, will completely vanish from the world map. At the other end of Eurasia, China's largest megacities and economic centers, Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, will share Atlantis's fate. The resort islands of Bermuda and the Maldives, symbols of tropical paradise, will also cease to exist. Japan, where every square meter of land is already worth its weight in gold, will lose a significant part of its territory. The United States will not escape flooding either. Coastal areas of Texas, Louisiana, Florida, and South Carolina will be underwater. Regions where millions of people live and trillions of dollars in assets are concentrated. The key parameter in this catastrophe equation is time. When exactly the Doomsday Glacier will break away from its underwater support and begin its free fall. 2024 research shows this could happen within five years. After breaking away from its underwater ridge, the glacier will begin moving with acceleration. According to scientists' calculations, it will need only two to three years to gain speed sufficient for rapid destruction. Large-scale melting will result in the world potentially facing a sea level rise of more than one meters by the end of 2030. Europe will be among the first to experience these changes. In 2018, the ambitious International Thwaites Glacier Collaboration Project was launched. Scientists used the underwater robot IceFin to investigate the grounding line, the critical point where the glacier breaks away from the bottom and begins to float. This is the most vulnerable zone where warm ocean waters undermine the ice mass from below. The results of these underwater expeditions shocked even the researchers themselves. The British Antarctic Survey discovered that the glacier is melting in a completely unexpected way. The underwater robot recorded that, 
on the seafloor where the glacier was previously located, characteristic ridges 10 to 70 centimeters high had formed. These structures form daily under the action of tides interacting with the glacier's edge. Each day water lifts the glacier during high tide, creating a new small gap. Warm water penetrates there, simultaneously melting the glacier and moving bottom sediment, forming a new ridge. The situation is worsened by scientists' 2024 discovery of a heat source beneath the glacier. Research showed that geothermal sources operate under the glacier, a natural heater accelerating melting from below. This discovery explains why the glacier is melting faster than computer models predicted, which only accounted for atmospheric warming and the impact of warm ocean waters. Nature has created a perfect sandwich for destroying the glacier. Geothermal sources heat it from below. Warm ocean currents undermine it from the side, and rising global atmospheric temperature due to climate change affects it from above. Sensors installed by scientists recorded temperatures in some areas under the glacier that are two degrees higher than they should be under these conditions. This is a small difference by ordinary standards, but for an ice mass of this scale, it's a death sentence. Over the past 30 years, satellite data has shown dramatic acceleration of the glacier's retreat. What previously took a century now happens in decades. Geophysicists analyzing this data concluded that in the coming years, the glacier will continue to collapse even faster. In 2024, major conferences dedicated to the threat of Thwaites Glacier destruction were held in the USA. Dozens of glaciologists discussed the key question. Can the melting of the Doomsday Glacier be stopped or at least slowed? University of Chicago geophysics professor Douglas McAiel proposed an idea that might have seemed like science fiction just a few years ago. Underwater barriers that would prevent warm ocean waters from reaching the glacier. His idea includes creating curtains of air bubbles by laying air pipes on the seafloor and pumping cold air into them. The bubbles would rise to the surface, creating a kind of thermal insulation curtain that would prevent warm currents from reaching the glacier. Another proposal involves placing special white coverings on the glacier's surface that would reflect solar rays, reducing heating. This method has already been tested on some alpine glaciers, but scaling it to Thwaites' size presents a colossal technical challenge. However, not all scientists share optimism about the possibility of an engineering solution to the problem. Critics point to several key problems. The scale of the operation is insane. Delivering and installing materials in one of Earth's harshest and most inaccessible places presents enormous complexity. The glacier is melting not only due to warm currents, but also geothermal sources from below, against which underwater barriers are powerless. The ecological consequences of such large-scale environmental interventions are unpredictable and may create new problems without solving existing ones. European scientists emphasize that even the most advanced geoengineering technologies may prove powerless against a problem like the Thwaites Glacier. Oleg Stepanian, a researcher at the Southern Scientific Center of the Russian Academy of Sciences, believes that the volume of water that will enter the ocean in case of this glacier's melting is not so significant on a global ocean scale. Anne Gennady Matashov, president of the Academy of Sciences and Oceanographer, holds the view that by 2050, our planet faces not warming, but sharp cooling. According to his forecasts, the glacier will melt not for years and decades, but for thousands of years. However, not all Russian researchers are so optimistic. Ruslan Sharafutinov, director of the Institute of Ecology and Geography at Siberian Federal University, agrees with Western colleagues that Thwaites glacier melting threatens serious problems and sea level could rise by at least 3 mm. Financial analysts are already trying to assess the economic consequences of global sea level rise. The figures are astronomical. Protecting major coastal cities from flooding alone will require $15 to $70 trillion by the end of the century. For comparison, the entire world GDP in 2024 was about $100 trillion, but protective dams and barriers will be far from able to save all territories. Millions of people will inevitably face the need for relocation. According to UN forecasts, the number of climate refugees could reach 200 million people by 2050 and exceed 1 billion by the end of the century. Imagine evacuating entire countries like the Netherlands or the Maldives. 
Where will these millions of people be housed? Who will pay for new housing construction? How will such a number of relocatees be integrated into host societies? The global economy will face difficulties that have never existed before. Entire industries related to coastal infrastructure, tourism and fishing will disappear. Global trade routes and transportation systems will require restructuring. Changing climate conditions will lead to agricultural zone shifts and the need to develop new farming methods. The paradigm shift is already occurring in some regions of the world. From attempts to prevent the inevitable, humanity is gradually transitioning to adaptation strategies. Here are examples of how different countries are preparing for the new reality. The Netherlands, where a significant part of the territory is already below sea level, is developing the concept of floating cities, self-sufficient residential platforms that will rise with the water level. Singapore is investing billions of dollars in constructing protective barriers and raising coastal territories. Venice is implementing the Moes Project, a system of mobile barriers that protect the city from high tides and floods. Japan is developing plans to move important infrastructure inland to higher ground. Russia is creating programs for agricultural development in northern regions that will become more suitable for farming with climate warming. Of course, human history has known periods of sharp climate change before, though not as large scale as those ahead. At the end of the last ice age, about 14 to 500 years ago, sea level rose at rates up to four miniature per century. This led to flooding of huge coastal territories and the disappearance of entire cultures. Archaeologists have discovered dozens of ancient settlements underwater that were once on land, for example, the city of Dwarka off the coast of modern India. These historical examples show that human communities can survive even radical changes in habitat, but at the cost of enormous losses of significant portions of the population. However, there's a substantial difference. Today our planet is inhabited by 8 billion people. Global trade and information networks are developed, and most of the population lives in cities. Modern civilization is much more vulnerable to sudden changes than the relatively autonomous societies of antiquity. Climate changes will inevitably lead to geopolitical shifts. Countries that are currently the world's largest economies may lose significant parts of their territory. At the same time, regions that are now considered poorly suited for life may become new centers of civilization. Canada, Russia, and Scandinavian countries will potentially benefit from climate warming, gaining access to new agricultural lands and Arctic resources. Meanwhile, countries like Bangladesh, the Netherlands, and Egypt will face a real threat to their existence. These changes will inevitably lead to new conflicts over resources, territories, and influence. We're already seeing intensified struggle for control over the Arctic, which is becoming increasingly accessible due to ice melting. However, the global nature of the climate crisis could also become a unifying factor for some countries whose interests might coincide. But for Europe, this means a paradoxical double blow. On one hand, coastal cities from St. Petersburg to London, Amsterdam and Venice will face sea level rise of at least three more. On the other hand, the Gulf Stream shutdown will plunge the continent into a mini ice age, lowering temperatures in some parts of Norway by more than 20 degrees C. The hour of reckoning for the Doomsday Glacier is approaching. Although melting probably can't be stopped anymore, Humanity can still slow the overall pace of climate change and buy time for adaptation. But this doesn't necessarily have to be the end of humanity's story. Rather, the beginning of its new chapter, in which people will need to display their best qualities, intelligence, compassion, and adaptability in a new world, or display the worst. Then there will be pain and suffering, especially for the countries of Europe and North America.